Hello and thank you for joining me for episode number eight of Mike Drinks a Beer. It's been quite a while since I posted an episode, uh, but as they say, life intervenes. I've been pretty busy with school and family, so uh, just now getting around to episode number eight, but I'm glad uh, that we're all here together now. Today I'm going to be drinking uh, Dogfish Heads 61. Uh, this is a India Pale Ale, as you can see from the label. Uh, an India Pale Ale brewed with Syrah grape must. Um, if you know anything about Dogfish Head IPAs, you know that they offer 60-minute, uh, 90-minute, and 120-minute IPAs uh, that I can think of off the top of my head. They might have some more. Uh, and those all refer to the amount of time that the beers are hopped for. 61 does not mean that it's hopped for 61 minutes. Uh, you know, once you get up to an hour, that extra minute's not going to do a whole lot. Uh, what that means is that this is Dogfish Head's 60-minute IPA plus one ingredient, which is that Syrah grape must. Now, what is must? Must is uh, basically grapes that are used to make wine, put it into a press, crush it, and you've got must. Uh, must is the juice, the skins, the stems, the seeds, all of that stuff, uh, sort of the really raw ingredients of, of wine making. And then, of course, in most cases, all of the juice is drained off. That goes on to be the wine. You have all this solid stuff left over. Uh, but in any case, so this is uh, Dogfish Head 60-Minute IPA with Syrah Grape Must. So rather than making uh, Syrah or Shiraz wine, they've added it to their beer here. I'm going to drink it out of this uh, either Duvel or Duvel, uh, to use a really American pronunciation, this uh, tulip-shaped goblet. I have a suspicion that the 61 is going to be relatively full-bodied and also bitter and, and um, heavy with, with hops, so I thought that this might be the best way to go about things. So it's going to look pink or even orange on um, on first pour here, which is really nice. It's interesting. Okay, so here we are. Uh, it gives you a nice head right off the pour. I'd say about an inch. It looks relatively light, but it's it's nice to look at. Uh, the beer itself has a really deep rose color to it. Um, I don't know what it looks like to you, but to me it looks rose with maybe just a little bit of uh, on the orange side, some nice carbonation in there, lots of bubbles. Let's give it a sniff. It really smells like a, a typical IPA. It's got uh, some relatively uh, subtle citrus notes to it, so I said it has a tint of orange to it, not because I thought there were oranges in it, but you do get a little bit of a scent of orange in there. Uh, really hoppy, It's I know it's going to taste bitter, but it has sort of this indescribable heavy smell to it. You know, it doesn't smell like wine. You're not going to get uh, raw grapes out of this, but it just sort of smells heavy, and I know that sounds weird, but if you have this beer and you smell it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Let's give it a shot. Sweetness does come through on the taste. Uh, while you don't smell a whole lot of sweetness there, it definitely comes through on the taste. Still plenty of hops. If you're a hop head like me, you're going to like this. But they are sort of backed up by that sweetness. Hops tend to be sort of right in the front of your mouth. Um, and, it, and it sounds sort of weird to say that hops are a forward flavor, but in my mind, they're sort of like the, the first line of attack when it comes to beer flavor. Those hops really hit you right in the face. Right behind that is a little bit of sweetness. I don't know that at this temperature, this is pretty cold right now, I don't know that I would say it tastes like grape uh, or what I suspect wine must would taste like because I've never tasted it before. Uh, but there's not a whole lot of sweetness going on right now. Let's try it again. There are some grapes there. Uh, give it a little swish around your mouth. Really open it up. Uh, the the flavor that is. Don't open your mouth and swish. You're going to end up, you know, looking like an idiot. Uh, but if you sort of swish it around, expose it to more air, you're going to get a little bit of a grape flavor there, and it's really pleasant. Uh, this is a little bit more creamy than you would expect out of a lot of IPAs. 
Um, but it's not unpleasant. That combination of hops and creaminess isn't bad. You can see that uh, there is a little bit of lacing here, not a whole lot. The head has gone down substantially, but it looks like it's going to sort of hang out right there at that level. Uh, this is really good at a cold temperature, uh, which sort of makes sense. IPAs are, are warm weather beers, uh, so it, it, it tastes pretty good right now. I'm going to let it warm up, sip on it a little bit, and I'll check back in in a few minutes, and we'll see what happens once it's reached a little bit higher temperature. Okay, so we've given the beer a few minutes to warm up, uh, and it's changed quite a bit. And I won't say whether it's for the better or for the worse, because to me, it's just different. It's not better, it's not worse. Uh, you can see that, uh, well, maybe you can't see, it looks a little different to me. The head is thinned out just a little bit here, not a whole lot. It hasn't disappeared. A little bit of lacing over here, so you're going to keep the head, have, still have a little bit of foam there, which is pleasant. I think that as this beer warms up, the grape must comes out a lot more than you would expect uh, from the earlier colder temperatures. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, if, you, uh, if you like drier wines, not really dry, it doesn't have to be bone dry. If you like drier wines, uh, I think this is going to be right up your alley. That sweetness comes out, but also it has a little bit of a tart bite to it as well. At the same time that all that is happening, the hops level really comes down quite a bit. Uh, and so I think whether you like IPA or dry red wine, or if you like both of those, uh, you're really going to find something that you enjoy in this beer, and I would highly recommend it. Uh, the sweetness comes out, the tartness comes out as it warms up, and it's really a pleasant beer. Uh, Dogfish Head just came out with this in March. This is a brand new beer. Uh, they said they're going to make it available four times a year. I don't really know what those four times a year are. I can't remember uh, where I bought it or when I or when it was, uh, so I can't really tell you off the top of my head. I would guess maybe when the seasons change, uh, when they're rolling out their seasonal beers anyway, so that might be a good time to look for it. They sell it in four packs, uh, and you'll find it right by the 60-minute, 90-minute IPAs as well. Uh, I highly recommend this beer, and if you see it in the stores, it's certainly worth a try. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it. As always, though, uh, drink responsibly. If you find that you've had a few too many, call a family member, call a friend, or call a cab. Don't try to get home on your own. That's just stupid uh, because you probably can't do it. Uh, if you want to keep following me, uh, send me email at mikedrinksabeer at gmail.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at MASKAGS and on Untapped, the beer rating app, at MASKAGS as well. Until next time, enjoy responsibly uh, and cheers.